Hey guys, my name is Attorney Walter of Not the Third with Disability Resolution PA. Now we've done a ton of videos, but I think it's important that I kind of go into essentially what's going on with the COVID details based on articles that are produced by other providers. We're going to be uh, talking specifically about Lambda. I know we have other uh, particular variants right now that we're all dealing with, but Lambda, we don't know what's going to happen with this. This might show up in America in a more uh, aggressive manner and form, so let's go into it. Either way, an article from NPR, coronavirus update, specifically um, from Laurel Wamsley, uh, the Lambda variant, what you should know and why experts say not to panic, okay? So let's go into this article real quick and go through some of the basics with it, okay. While the Delta variant of the coronavirus has quickly become the dominant strain in the United States, it's not the only variant circulating in the population. The Lambda variant, first identified in Peru, is also making headlines as it started to be identified in several states. Houston Methodist Hospital reported its first case of the variant this week. Scientists at the Medical University of South Carolina recently announced that they had found the variant in a virus sample taken in April. So it's been around for a little while. According to a database for scientists tracking coronavirus variants, fewer than 700 cases of Lambda variant have been sequenced in the U.S. so far out of more than 34 million coronavirus cases reported to date. But the U.S. has sequenced only a tiny fraction of its cases, so that number does not reflect the actual number of Lambda cases in the country. So what they're saying is there's probably a lot of them here. However, of course, it's probably got the, uh, the Brady Bunch syndrome where it wants to be the, uh, the dominant strain, but it can't. So we're just going to have to leave that up to our good friend, uh, the Delta strain. Fewer than 1% of the U.S. cases in the last four weeks have been identified as the Lambda variant, according to GISAID, a repository for genome data. So do we need to add Lambda to our list of big worries in the U.S.? Not yet, according to the public health officials and experts. The Delta variant, which is more than two times as tr transmissible as the original strain of the coronavirus, now accounts for 83% of the new coronavirus cases in the United States. That's the Delta, not the Lambda. Let me read it again. The Delta variant, which is more than two times as transmissible as the original strain of the coronavirus, now accounts for 83% of the new coronavirus cases in the United States. Delta continues to be central, uh, continues to be the central concern for public health officials. Cool. What we know about the Lambda variant. The Lambda variant was first identified in Peru in August 2020, according to the World Health Organization. Cases with the variant have now been identified in 28 countries. So this thing has traveled. I mean, you know, I haven't seen specific details yet on how likely it is to be caught, like Delta. We just said two times more transmissible than uh, the original COVID-19 virus. But nonetheless, uh, let's keep reading. The Lambda variant was first identified in Peru, yada, yada. Cases with the variant have now been identified in 28 countries, according to the GIS GISAID. Though many of those have identified only a handful of Lambda cases. Dr. Stuart Ray is a professor of medicine at the John Hopkins Hospital, where he specializes in infectious disease. Ray opened one of the first COVID-19 wards at the John Hopkins uh, at John Hopkins in March 2020, and he has also overseen John Hopkins COVID-19 sequencing efforts. It's actually easier for me to read if I bring it up a little closer to my face and with the glasses off, you're not seeing the big ring. He tells NPR that Lambda is sort of a cousin of the Alpha variant, one of the earliest. <clears throat> identified variants of concern. So this is kind of like a cousin, you know, like it would pick on us, but it wouldn't really be that bad. You know, maybe it's a nice cousin. Here we go. Lambda spread until it became a dominant sequence in people with COVID-19 in Peru. The WHO noted last month an elevated presence of Lambda in other South American countries, including Argentina, Chile, and Ecuador. And now we know it's present in the United States. So we know it's going to grow. We know it's going to get worse. But they're telling us in this article that not to worry, we should, you know, obviously be worried about the other one more being Delta. The Lambda variant carries a number of mutations with suspected implications, such as potential increased transmissibility or possible increased resistance to neutralizing antibodies, the WHO says. But it says the full extent of those mutations impact isn't yet well understood and will need further study. While there hasn't been clear head-to-head -head data, the evidence so far does not suggest that the Lambda variant has any great advantage over the Delta variant, Ray says. Now remember, when you compare the Lambda variant to the Delta variant, right, you want, you want to know right off the bat which one is worse. But the reality is, and that's a human thing, well, which one's worse? Am I going to get that one? You know, but the reality is this. <clears throat> the Lambda variant, a cousin of the Alpha variant, is still going to be bad and still present. Obviously, it'll probably start in the more southern states uh, because that's where a lot of the people from South America tend to travel. You know, they're not all going to the state of Washington. And as a result of that, we'll probably see a lot of Lambda and Delta in Florida. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, yeah. Delta is clearly dominating right now. <laughs> <sighs> They've won the sports contest. 
And so I think our focus can remain on Delta as a hallmark of a highly infectious variant. And there's some evidence that it might cause greater severity per infection, although that's still a developing story, he says. The COVID-19 vaccines work well against variants. Except Loki. They haven't worked on Loki yet. There isn't yet full data on vaccine effectiveness against the Lambda variant, but so far studies have found that vaccines available in the U.S. provide protection against the major strains of the virus, including the highly transmissible Delta variant. Do you notice how they put in there U.S.? The vaccines available in the U.S.? It makes you think about the other countries where they have vaccines, but they're not very effective. Uh, because, you know, in the U.S., we probably have, you know, our three main vaccines, but other countries could have more or less, and those less or more vaccines that they do have could be less effective. We know the vaccine, vaccination almost uniformly protects people, Ray says. The vast majority of hospitalizations and deaths from COVID-19 in the U.S. now are among the unvaccinated people. That's true, but there's a lot of vaccinated people now getting it as well. Studies have found that the vaccines are less effective at generating neutralizing antibodies against the variants of concern than against the original strain of the virus. That's the most important sentence of this entire thing. Let me read it again. Studies have found that the vaccines are less effective at generating neutralizing antibodies against the variants of concern than against the original strain of the virus. So what, what this is saying is the vaccines are less effective at beating, keeping away the variants than the vaccines are against the original alpha. So alpha vaccines work really darn well, and then these guys, not as well. But T-cells also play a significant role in the body's immune response, and T-cell response isn't measured in neutralizing antibody clinical tests, meaning that the vaccines could be more effective against the variants than is suggested by tests of antibody response alone. <clears throat> the WHO says Lambda is a variant of interest. CDC does not. Interesting. Because when you think about that, the WHO is the World Health Organization versus the CDC being like the U.S. version of that. It's interesting that you know, because for insurance purposes, if the CDC was like a private corporation, they'd be like, everything's terrible, be afraid, you know. WHO now assigns Greek letters to strains of the coronavirus that are classified as variants of concern or variants of interest. You know, it makes me wonder, like, how, how, do, we, how do we know that it's so different enough? Like, what, what is the, the qualifying, you know, that's just a little mutation off of Alta versus this is a variant. This is a full on variant that must be pruned. A variant of concern is one that has characteristics such as being significantly more transver transmissible or more uh, virulent. I think that's the proper pronunciation of that. The alphabetical order of the variants, Greek letter names indicate the order in which they were identified as potentially important. They are not in any particular alphabetical order of severity. So that's important. So when we get to Zeta, um, that doesn't mean it's the really, really bad one. That just means, you know, it was late to the party. The alpha, beta, gamma, and delta variants are all considered variants of concern by the WHO. So the alpha, the original, the beta, the one we're all dealing with right now. Oh, no, sorry. Beta wasn't, we're not dealing with that. Gamma, I don't know anything about. And delta is the one that everybody's like, oh, no. The WHO classifies Lambda last month as global variant of interest. Mm. A step of the variant of concern. Mm. That means it exhibits genetic changes suspected of affecting its transmissibility and disease severity and has been identified as causing significant immunity transmission or multiple COVID-19 clusters. So it gets around. The Centers of Disease Control and Prevention keeps its own list of variants of concern and interest with the United States. So now we're talking about the CDC, not the WHO. Notably, the Lambda is not on the CDC's list of being a variant of interest, concern or high consequence. Ray says tracking variants is important so that we don't get blindsided by one sudden arrival. Well, just because they don't have it on the list doesn't mean the CDC is not aware of it. We have to be vigilant for these new variants and track them. Um, genomic epidemiology remains an important... Um, Remains an important activity for us to understand this epidemic, Ray says. But I think right now Lambda is a variant of interest, and we'll see whether it becomes a variant of concern. The things we need to do to counter new strains are the same things that we already know to do to counter the coronavirus. That's a blanket statement. The things we need to do to counter new strains are the same things that we already know to do to counter the coronavirus. And the stakes are high because Delta is so transmissible. I don't feel like we really know how to combat the coronavirus appropriately because these little masks that we wear don't really do much. Like if you go out and spray an aerosol can, you're going to smell all that aerosol coming through your mask. And it's not all going to be coming through your mask, but you're still going to smell it because guess what? The particles are getting in. That means vaccination is more important than ever, Ray says, as the variants become more infectious than the proportion of vaccinated people required to control the epidemic increases. 
You know, it's a balancing thing here that we're looking at. Like, how serious do we take this? How afraid do we need to be? How, like, oh my goodness, it's the end of the world? Do we need to look at this? Because if we really are fearful, then less people will get it because more people will be more willing to get the vaccine and more people will be willing to wear masks and this and that and yada yada and constantly wash their hands. You know, the mucosa. I guess the big thing for me that I, I always think about is, you know, I was one of those individuals who in the very beginning was like, eh, it's just a flu, eh, it's just a this, and to some degree it is technically a flu, it's just a bad one. Um, and so, you know, what this kind of comes down to is I just don't want my dogs to get it, you know, because what procedures are in place within the veterinary field, I don't know, I should call my sister and ask her, cause she's a top specialist in veterinary medicine, she's postdoctor, double board certified, all that jazz. What, what is there for animals who get this? Do they get the sniffles? Are they okay? You know, is it like a tick thing where some ticks bite animals and they're totally fine? Some big ticks bite animals and they're like dying from it. Where in the spectrum on the spectrum is this with my dogs? So when I think about it, I had to kind of put away or put aside my own like, oh, it's just a flu, and realize that well, I don't want them to get it. Because all this study that's going on, the, the millions and billions going into studying this whole thing, that's not going into the study of animals at the same level. And there's significantly less funding for it, and that's not just, you know, because we don't love animals, it's because we don't have the money. or even, yeah, And that's the other thing, too. We don't know. You know, we, every, every week, every day, we're getting new information, and that's like... Well, maybe it's this. Well, maybe it's that. Well, maybe it's this. Well, maybe it's that. You know, science back in the day used to be much more concrete. It used to be like, it is this. It is that. This is what the test shows. And and now everything's like, now all these articles are coming out where everything's hedging. Everything's hedging its bet. It might go this way. It might go that way. Who knows? Who knows? It's just interesting, you know, so... Anyways, my name is Attorney Walter Nod. I just wanted to give you guys a quick update because a lot of the people that I interact with have immune system restrictions or basically some sort of uh, issue where they get sick more easily. And it just it doesn't have to just be the immune system. It could be anything. It could be that they have uh, you know some sort of cleft lip, and then the mucosa is more uh, capable of receiving particles. It, it could be anything, you know. So. Uh, anyways, my name is Attorney Walter Roof, not the third. I'm with Display Resolution PA. I will catch you a little bit later. Remember, I go live 8 to 10 every Thursday, Eastern Standard Time, on YouTube. 8 to 10 Thursday, Eastern Standard Time. Call the phone number and you can get me. That's when I donate two hours. If you want the most updated information, just check in with me. And also, um, what helps me out with these videos is if you like them, you subscribe to the channel, and then basically five stars. If you can leave me five star reviews on the on the things in the bio below, that always helps me. Have an absolutely wonderful day. I'll catch you a little bit later, and thank you so much. Bye-bye.